Okay, let's start a rotary project. And uh, we'll set this one at the dimensions of 10 by 4, four inch diameter. And we'll leave the part off at uh, a half an inch. Our project shows up. So we're going to be using some of the uh, more advanced software features such as the pattern modeling tools. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw my region and I can go ahead and center it. And then on the edges here, I'm going to attach those, set them to zero so that the edges of my my region here are going to be exactly the same width as the as the board here so it'll it'll be a perfect uh, size to fit around that and then I'm actually going to size it a little bit away from my part off so I've got just a little bit of uh, margin in between the edge of my pattern area and the, the part off dimension so now I'm going to use this and I'm going to select my extrude tool and we're going to make like a candlestick so we're going to draw a profile and it'll revolve around this piece and we can make a really nice candlestick okay so in the extrusion tool here it shows our profile window where we can draw the profile but it's showing my red and green edges are indicating that whatever I, I draw here is going to be extruded in this direction which will not revolve around this. It'll be up and down rather than revolving around this way. So I need to change the orientation to horizontal. That way it'll extrude this direction and then wrap the design around my rotary piece. So for a candlestick, we'll do just kind of a traditional looking candlestick. Let's start off with just kind of a top part of the candlestick which most traditional candlesticks have got a little or they've got a, a belled out top and I like a little area here for the candle to actually recess down into And just using arch tools, we'll create a series of these little areas, create some visual interest. And you, know, you can design your, your candlestick however you want. This is just uh, kind of a quick uh, traditional look for brass or, or lathe turned candlesticks. And then towards the bottom of these, they kind of bell out to a big foot. And let's space this a little bit further away. And we could, you can go in and set the exact dimensions if you want. Uh, for this purpose, we can do just a, some eyeball dimensions, but you could go in and, and set exactly how far away from the center it's going to be and, and be very precise about your diameters. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to just make sure it's pushed all the way to the edges by clicking that button and then let's hit OK. So then there's our extrusion and there it is wrapped around. Pretty decent looking candlestick. Alright so one thing because we we kept this pattern uh, spaced away from the part off we see this raised area in between the part off and our, our turned piece here. And then we also see a little bit of an extra area of our footer on there as well. So this is where the part off diameter really comes into play and, and what you're going to set it at. 
So I'm going to create a region here that just goes over my keepout zone and overlaps into my pattern. And then when I make that a region, I'm going to set its depth deeper so that it actually creates kind of a, a tab in a way. So if I set the, the, the depth at one inch, it's, uh, it's going to carve down and give me that diameter. But let's set the depth even further. So if I set it to 1.9, say, that actually carves very far down, but it gives me this tiny, tiny little tab here, which is not going to be strong enough to hold on. So one thing that we should be looking at is if I hover over this and you look at the bottom left hand of the screen it'll actually show you the diameter so it's showing there hovering over that that di diameter is only 0.2 inches which is tiny and we need at least half an inch in order to hold on to the carving very well otherwise the wood will actually twist or break off and you won't be able to get a very a good carve out of it it'll fail most likely so let's change this diameter to maybe point 1.5 and that beefs it up quite a bit now if I hover over that that's giving me a diameter of 1.001 so I've got a one inch diameter there which that should be sufficient to hold on to that and it is a little more than maybe we necessarily need but I think for this project we might be able to get away with uh, just the half inch that we originally set for the part off. So if I make 1.75, I can look down there and now it's at 0.5. So now it matches my part off. It's beefy enough that it should hold on to this whole thing after it's carved. And I can feel confident in it being secured. So I can actually now just take that region and uh, copy and paste it and let's move it down and just do the same thing on the bottom there and you'll see now it clears away that excess area it gives me my little tape tapered part off which matches the diameter of this and then intersects with my actual carved piece so when I go to carve this it'll have just these two tabs that I'll need to cut off in the end and I'll, I'll be able to quickly release this from the, uh, the rest of the wood and, and finish it. Now, if I did want to change it to that one inch, I can go and just change both of these regions to 1.5, which gave me that, that one inch diameter. And then I can go into my board settings and actually make my part off to be one inch rather than half inch. And it'll change the taper so that it comes down and meets that one inch diameter. All right, so this is a very simple, quick and easy to do candlestick, but it's not all that different than what I could probably go and produce on a lathe. So what really sets the Carverite uh, rotary jig apart is that I'm not limited to just these the simple shapes that I can make on a lathe. I can embellish this. So if I wanted to, let's say, go in here, draw a region, and then apply a diamond texture to it. Let's set it down to one and a half inches and then make it additive merge and then let's shallow up the height down to maybe about 20 and that gives me a nice little diamond pattern down at the base of my my candlestick so nice little embellishment now one thing to pay attention to is you can see here where the patterns are joining up it's a little bit different variation in the pattern but I can actually make that join up perfectly 
So I can do the same thing I did on the other ones. I can attach this to the edge of the board, set it to zero to make sure that this is exactly the same size as the project board. And it's telling me that the, the length of it is 12.563. So if I go into my texture, I can say 1.253. And that will actually alter that pattern design so that it matches the dimension of that board and it'll actually come around and match up perfectly. Now you're seeing that little bit of a line there that we saw on the last project, which is bit optimization and floor feather. So if I use, make sure I eliminate my feathers and turn floor feather off, I can eliminate those lines and I can get really nice clean seams. So we can do other things, just like we did on the other projects, add patterns to it. The top part here has got this kind of flat area that maybe we can add some, some patterns to. So let's find something uh, how about just a, a simple fleur de lis? Let's add it in there. And you'll notice that it just kind of jumps out because it's by default set at a uh, quarter inch. So let's first of all size it so that it actually fits in that area. Kind of centers there. And it's jumping out at us, and you'll notice how it's it's at an angle because as this rotates around uh, the bit essentially will be cutting at these angles as it as it re revolves around this piece so let's set this down to a, uh, a depth that actually makes a little bit more sense uh, let's set it to uh, one and a half and you'll notice that on the board here it's showing at uh, normal proportions as we would expect it for a flat but on the rotary piece here it's gotten really squished but so that's that same effect that we saw when the pattern was higher on the and you know sticking out you saw those angled pieces so as it gets down to the inner parts of the the board everything is going to get much narrower so we're actually going to need to compensate for that by stretching our pattern out in order to get it back to a proportion on our turn piece that looks like what we would expect it to. So by stretching that out we can get that to actually show up there very nicely. And then let's copy and paste it. And then we've got a couple more we can put on here. Mirror that across. So we've got them rotating around the top of the candlestick. So almost looks like a Mardi Gras theme or New Orleans or, or something with the fleur de lis and this kind of festive diamond pattern. So that project is pretty well ready to go. We've got our our part off areas here. We've got some embellishments. We've got our curve set. The last step of this is we'll need to select our patterns and we can just select them all in the list here. Set our bit optimization to best. And that just makes sure that we don't get any chip out when they get into these small center areas and our patterns start to get really 
detail and intricate, it gets much more difficult for the bits to, to handle. Now on all of these carved, we're going to be using the 1 8 inch long carving bit. You can, in the board settings, change that pattern bit uh, to whatever you want, but when you get to the machine, it's going to tell you what bit it requires and allow you to, to do some changes there. So if you want to use the 3 16th inch bit or the 1 16th inch long carving bit, you'll have the option to change it there, but it is advised to be very careful doing that as most operations are going to be done best with the 1 8th inch long bit. So at this point, you save it and then upload to your memory card.